What's going on guys? Chump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy, having a great day. Today we're going to be opening up these four 6600 XTs. We're going to be combining them with these two and five more I have in the other room. And we're going to build a mining rig. Let's do it. All right, so here we are over near the uh, Crypto Mine and Grow tent. We have the five Sapphire Pulses that are right there. Those are actually gonna be intertwined into that rig we're gonna build, and we're gonna be putting it right over there in the corner. All right, so first things first, I think we'll start with the uh, Merc 308. Oh, we opened it from the bottom. So from you guys that don't know, I purchased these used, like I said, in a previous video, but I got these from a friend on Discord. It's not something I normally do, but I know they were taken care of, so check it out. Yeah. So this is my first FXF card, not gonna lie. I have never owned one. This is a Radeon RX 6600 XT, like I said before. I don't know what the difference is between this one and the Quick 308, but we're gonna find out in a second. Okay, so the tops look a little different, looking at it from this angle and actually that GPU over there has a silver ring around the outer edge. This one does not. So I assume the uh, Merc 308 is better than the Quick 308. So I'm going to pull off this PCIe guard. I'm going to put this aside and check out the next one. So the Gigabyte one is this one right here. I believe it should look exactly the same if I'm not mistaken. And it's actually a little bit different. Interesting. I mean, it looks super clean, but the, uh, the outer housing is actually a little like thicker all right so these are the two cards side by side if you look at this this one is the one we just got and the one on top is the gigabyte eagle i don't know uh if there's too much of a difference but they're both gigabyte the boxes look somewhat similar but the cards just look a little bit different so interesting last but not least let's open up this sapphire pulse excited about this because now this gives me a total of six of these cards and there it is the Sapphire Pulse 6600 XT. It's gonna look fantastic with all the other ones. All right, let's, uh, let's go disassemble the other rig. All right, so here we are. Now let's, uh, I guess, just shut this down and take these cards out. It's really all I can do. Just gonna start by unplugging them and take them off the board. The only nice thing is I don't have to remove any risers. All right, so this is gonna be a terrifying game of can you balance five GPUs, a camera, and get it over into the location we need to be in. I honestly didn't think I had that much talent, but apparently that works out well. All right, I actually can't put them down. All right, so we have all of the GPUs we're gonna be using for this build. So the six 6600 XT Sapphire Pulses, we've got the two XFX cards, the two Eagle cards, and one ASRock Challenger. I've had these two cards and I had five of those pulses as you guys just saw. So now let's go over the parts we're going to use for this build. Right here we have risers from GPURisers.com and I actually have one AAA wave riser because I am very thin on my riser count. I have some 1x connections right there. Then we have a breakout board, a 1200 watt server PSU, some splitters for the cards because I'm going to have one power the top of the card one go down to the riser and then from the back of the splitter down to the breakout board right here we have the pico power supply this i'll explain to you guys how it works but more or less it's a 24 pin to provide power to the motherboard and then right here we have a sata by molex uh, wire which is going to be powering the two molexes on this asrock h110 motherboard we're going to throw that motherboard down there on the AAA wave sluice frame so it's uniform like all the other ones we're going to put all 11 cards on this thing which means i'll only need one more to fill it up and uh hopefully we'll be able to run it all off of that one 1200 watt psu so let's do it
right, so I think we're in a good uh, situation now, which is nice. Now, I wanna give you guys a few little tips and tricks. Starting with this PCIe 1X connection. You guys just saw me electrical tape these things. Those tabs on the back, I will take these and put them face down on a floor or a hard surface, preferably cement, because you could potentially put a little dimple in the hard wood or whatever you're pushing against, but you just take your thumb and you push down and it will bend over those tabs. And then I electrical tape them because if you don't, on these ASRock H110 boards, the PCIe's are way too close together and they will touch each other, which will not allow your rig to mine. You will have an issue and you won't know why. So that is like one huge pointer I can give you guys. Another one, as you can see right here, this screw, just like this one up here that goes to hold the server PSU fan in place, I will undo it I will take this little rectangle piece that they give you for a normal ATX PSU and I will give it a little bit of a bend. It's a little tough to do, but I'll just push it into the frame after I tighten this screw on and then bend it back a little bit and drive this screw into the server PSU through that piece of metal and it'll hold it in place so it can't slide around easy. And last but not least, when you're using splitters to split between a card and a riser, just make sure that this splitter is actually against or in the middle of the two GPUs before you start the rig, just so it's not interfering with the neighboring GPUs fans, because I've had that happen before and it just, it'll either hold the fan still and then the temperature will be all off or it could potentially just make a awful ticking noise and it just sounds terrible. One thing I do wanna mention, this Pico power supply right here, so this thing is fed off this red and black cable, which goes to a six pin, and it is a actual six pin female. So I needed to use a six pin male by six pin male to plug into that, and I don't have one that's like a couple inches long. So I took a splitter, I plugged the splitter into the breakout board, one side of it that would normally go to the GPU or riser, and I took the other male end and plugged it into that female that goes to the 24 pin, and because I needed a female end to plug into the six pin for the SATA by Molex adapter, the wire will just back feed from the six pin male from the breakout board through to the actual SATA and over to the actual Pico power supply. Again, I am not going to be CPU mining with this, so I'm not concerned. As soon as I get another ZSX breakout board, I will be putting that in. I just do not have any more. So that's the reason of me using this Pico power supply. All right, so I just spun the rig around. I actually plugged in the ethernet cable. You can see that USB right next to the ethernet cable plugged into the board. That is actually the power for this seven inch Kumin screen. Then we have the HDMI cable going, basically wrapping around because it's super long and it's going to this GPU because that is actually the GPU that goes to that long 16X slot that is on the motherboard. I never use the display on the motherboard. I always pull it off the GPU and I never have any issues with my screens. A lot of people ask me questions about those and that's how I've always run them. So I always just run it right off the GPU. All right, so again, we're all hooked up. We got the power to the server PSU plugged in. This is the actual power meter from Mr. Matt Electron. Again, thank you so much for these. Plugged into the PDU right there. Server PSU has power. So I'm gonna power this on first. Okay, nope. And that's not what you want. All right, so as you guys just saw, there was a uh, catastrophic failure. <laughs> Look at this wire. It totally zapped all the way down and just completely ruined this outer casing. I'm not perfect and obviously I made a big mistake. This could have been way worse. Thankfully it wasn't, but um, let me explain to you what happened. So these cables, I actually, for whatever reason, didn't even realize that this, looking at it, okay, it has, looks like a hot and neutral and then like a five volt and probably another neutral or hot. Looking at this six pin by SATA, this is literally just neutrals and hots. And I can guarantee you that's what went wrong. <laughs> that's, that is just, oh my God. I don't know, I'm stupid. All right, whatever. So. Either way guys, this is the part of being a miner that a lot of people don't show you. I just couldn't cut this out of the build. So now my real issue, I ended up putting 
a power supply in here. It has a 24 pin, it has the Molexes, so I plugged the board in, okay? I got it working. But the unfortunate part is it will not post with more than nine GPUs. It doesn't matter where I put these on the board. I've unplugged the ones that are on there and moved them to the left side and they fire up no problem. I've tried to use a powered splitter because this four-way splitter right here didn't work. And again, that still didn't work. So unfortunately, I definitely made this H110 a nine GPU mining motherboard now it just doesn't work with 13 so unfortunately it is what it is but the only good saving grace is i have one more h110 so i'm gonna go grab that the rig that it's on only has nine cards on it so i'm gonna steal it i'm gonna swap the board out this one for that one and i'm gonna bring that back down i'm gonna throw it in and you guys are gonna see that in just a second all right so we made it back that is the new motherboard everything is plugged in so fingers crossed and i'm hoping we're not going to have any other failures when i hit this power button <laughs> realistically we shouldn't so let's uh turn this thing on and get the motherboard powered on all right so get this just got down here i got the new asrock h110 board plugged in tried to turn it on still nothing so what i'm going to do right now is try to update the bios and see if that's the issue and if that's the issue then guess what i didn't ruin the motherboard so give me a second let me try it are you kidding me it's working flawlessly so again this is the new motherboard and by the way when you update the bios you don't need those stupid molexes so this would have never happened if i just did that three hours ago so now I've lost three hours of my life and uh, hopefully you guys learned something from this. So the BIOS update worked. I remember Red Panda talking about the 6600s for some reason wouldn't register over nine or 10 and it dawned on me once I swapped out the motherboard and the issue didn't change. So guys, just be aware of that. You might need to update the BIOS on your motherboard if you have a specific one like the H110. My BIOS was just old and that really did it and we're looking at just under 900 at the wall. And real quick, I put that Pico power supply back in. It works perfectly fine. It was 100% a user error. So again, even to people that have been doing this quite a while, we still make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Just be safe guys, because this, if I didn't shut it off as fast as I did, 100% would have fried something on that board. Miners, thanks so much for sticking to it through the end. Hopefully you guys learned something today. Please don't make that same mistake that I made. It was absolutely awful, but you know what? Not everybody's perfect, as you guys can see. So please don't forget, go down, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and check out one of my other videos here or here, and you guys might learn something else. But until next time, please stay safe. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.